yesterday, all you did was just call their names. I, was, I had my eyes closed and my hands were up. And when you called my name, I just felt a jolt through my body. I had very severe pain in my big toe, very severe pain. But as you called my name yesterday, that's all you did. You just called my name and then the, the pain just disappeared. Now I don't have any pain in my toe again. So I just want to give glory to God. This reminds me of uh, Jesus Christ using a word to call out Lazarus from the dead. By doing so, he's telling us how he will also raise us up from the dead at the last day. He will just call our names and we will rise up. He do not need to wave his hand and say, fire, fire, or uh, look at you and wink one eye. Uh, and then you raise from the dead. No, he called your name and you are raised from the dead. One of them asked a good question. She said, what is the hidden mana as recorded in the book of Revelation chapter 2? And my answer was this. I said that the hidden mana is also written in the book of Revelation. Take it and eat it. After Apostle John ate this scroll, then God said to him, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. After you eat the hidden manna, it gives you power to continue to minister. It is a bread that the ancient Israelites eat to move on in their daily activities. It gives them power, strength. So the hidden manna simply means spiritual manna. After you eat this uh, hidden manna, it gives you the power to prophesy again about many languages and nations. So I remembered I was led to wake up to continue the ministry until 2 a.m. in the morning, midnight. And then I was walking about, I read the Bible, I was praising God. Then a voice from heaven told me, he said, now John, I want you to go and minister to people at that time in the morning. So I took out my phone and I called one of the members in the church. I ate the hidden mana. So I said to him, I said, you have a son and the son is six years old and the son have a condition in the stomach. And he's very surprised. He said, how did you know all these things? And my answer is that the hidden mana boosts you. If you see me before the crusade, uh, in some of the days, I must eat the hidden mana first before I can go out to the stage and I come and look at you and I said, who is 33 years old? Who is 35 years old? This is this. You have a daughter. These are visions. Good morning, church. So um, I've been studying Revelations for a while. This is a mystery for me when the two witnesses are witnessing and it says that and their bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Um, can you explain um, the spiritual significance for Revel Revelations 11 and 8, Prophet John? So it says their bodies will lie on the ground for three and a half days, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, just as Rome is referred to as Babylon in the book of Revelations, figuratively. So Sodom and Egypt, it is the, the birth of the sins of the nations. Reminds me actually, because these two witnesses have the power of mm. Moses and Elijah, they can strike the plagues as often as they wish. And they can call down fire from heaven to consume their enemies. This is the anointing of the two witnesses in the book of Revelations. Mm. And the anointing of Moses is found in Egypt. And then calling down of the fire to consume their enemies, isn't it Sodom? Because fire rained down from heaven to destroy Sodom. So this is the figure, the rift, deeply speaking, okay? And fire will come out from their mouths to destroy them. Yeah, figuratively called Sodom. Because the anointing of Elijah 
is like the judgment of Sodom, calling down fire from heaven to destroy them. And the anointing of Moses is like the judgment of Egypt, keeps on getting plagues upon plagues upon them. So the place that they were killed, just like the Lord Jesus was killed, is called figuratively the place that they perform their miracles. The Apostle John in the book of Revelation cannot say, this is a city called uh, Michigan. That is a city called uh, Kuching in Malaysia. No, it cannot. Because there are many Egypts. There are many Sodoms all around the earth. I realize that there are certain verses, chapters that you come up with. And at the same time, what you raise, once you raise a chapter, then there becomes another chapter that is linked to what we have been saying. And my question was, is it that when you have all the, 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 the chapters, uh, remembering them, this, this is what I just want to be clear of because, man of God, I read the Bible, but it becomes difficult for me to link a particular chapter with another one. When you boldly stand in the barley field to defend for God, look, another Bible verse just came just like this when I'm talking. When you boldly stand in the barley field to defend God's work, God will strengthen you. So let us turn to the book of Samuel. When the Philistines banded together at a place where there was a field full of lentils, Israel's troop fled from them. But Shema took his stand at the middle of the field. He defended it and struck the Philistines down. And the Lord brought about a great victory. So as I was trying to explain, this verse just came just like this. Because I stood in the barley field when all my brothers and sisters have ran away when they see the enemy, the Philistines. But I stood in the barley field and I defended it. And the Lord brought about a great victory. As long as you go and defend your barley field, stand firm, be bold and courageous, the Lord will give you strength to defend it by giving you Bible verses to how to reply. Earth is heaven. Version number one. And heaven is heaven, version number two. Whatever you bind on earth, it is bound in heaven. Earth and heaven is connected. And as Christian, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, you're bringing heaven down to earth in you, in your neighborhood. So earth is heaven 1.0, and heaven is the new version of heaven.